Okay, folks, the country is about to lose its collective mind over the nomination of a new Supreme Court justice, but off to the side of that, I wanted to talk about a ruling that just occurred in Texas, so still judiciary-related, and uh, it's about voting rights, and I think it illustrates something about the concepts of disparate impact and about what I call the, the ratchet effect in legislation that I don't think we talk enough about. One of the things about Texas, and uh, you know, of course, I, I probably have viewers who are outside of Texas, so they don't all know about this, is that we have a thing in Texas called straight party uh, or straight ticket voting. And straight ticket voting means that you can, at the beginning of a ballot, pick a particular political party and just punch that entry, and it will select for you all of the party candidates of that particular um, party. So let's say that you're a Republican and you want to vote for all the Republican candidates on your ticket. Well, you can just go up to straight party or straight ticket Republican, click on that, and it will highlight and, and select for you all of the Republican candidates on the ballot. Now, this is a great time-saving device because you could wind up with many, many elections. You could wind up with, you know, not just your Congress people. Well, if you're in a particular district, you're only going to vote for the one Congress person. And then you could have a senator, uh, which is selected statewide. But then you've also got Texas offices. In Texas, you could have the governor, you could have the lieutenant governor, you can have, you know, treasurers, you can have uh, railroad commission, you could have... Uh, Supreme Court justices, you could have uh, appellate court justices, you could have just state courts throughout, you have justices of the peace, you could have uh, court clerks or things like that. All of these elected positions can fill up a very, very long ballot. I've heard that in some counties where they have a lot of different offices, you could have probably 93 elections on the same ballot, which means it's going to take a long time if you're going to, if you're going to have to punch through those one at a time. And moreover, moreover, you have to be careful as to make sure you're selecting the particular candidates you actually want. So, there was a move in Texas to get rid of straight ticket voting. Now, this has probably got something to do with uh, the pandemic and the election and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know exactly who brought it up and why. But the Democrats uh, decided that they were going to fight this. And... I, I noticed some Republicans online. Now, the courts have decided that, yes, they are going to freeze the straight ticket voting process so that it will be in play for this next election, at least. Uh, and whether they'll be able to get rid of it in the future is, is unclear. But uh, one of the things the Democrats came out against it, and the Republicans are basically saying, oh, the Democrats think that, you know, black and minority, uh, other minority voters are just too stupid to select the uh, individual names out to the side, you know, that have the R's or the D's uh, out to the side of their candidates' names. Uh, but it's not really a matter of intelligence. And uh, so I don't like the fact that people are falling back on that insult. I mean, sure, when you hear the Democrat argument that uh, minorities are going to be the most impacted by by the loss of straight ticket voting, that may be the first thing that comes to your mind. But the actual legal reasons for this are more sublime than that. It's not just, you know, well, we don't trust black or minority, other minorities, Latinos, whatever, to trust, to, to hit this, the proper buttons on the voting screens. You know, it's, it's not that. The issue really is time. The issue is that if you have to make a decision in 93 different uh, offices and select the person whose party matches what you want, that's going to take 93 times as long as just hitting straight party Democrat or straight party Republican. Now, what Democrats are afraid of is how that length of time is going to impact waiting at the voting places, at the polling places. And they're worried that people who are on the lower end of the economic spectrum, the, the poor working class, the lower middle class, the people who don't have the flexibility to take time off of work to go vote, which is one of the reasons why I think voting ought to be a national holiday, but uh, the 
for it for them not to be able to take the time to go vote uh, is going to cause them to not vote. And because minorities and other uh, minorities are usually the ones who are in the poorer and lower middle class ends of the spectrum, then this winds up having a disparate impact on minorities. So, so this is an example of something that I, I called uh, uh, implicit systemic racism, where when you have things that affect people in the lower economic bracket, well, people in the, no, the lower economic bracket have a tendency to be minorities. I mean, that's just the way the distribution falls. So they get a, a disparately impacted by things that affect the, the, the lower economic strata, and it winds up becoming not a racist thing because there's actually anything in the law saying race, you know, this race can't do that or that race can't do that, uh, or we're reserving certain privileges for people of certain races. It's not that. That would be explicit racism. That would be something like segregation. But implicit racism is something where things just happen to fall more disproportionately on the minorities, and therefore you've got, uh, you've got things like this, like the voting rights uh, at issue here. Do you want to increase voting times to the point where uh, poor voters, and therefore because poor voters, minority voters, are going to get disenfranchised for not being able to take the time to go to the polls and make their selections one at a time, all, you know, 20, 30, 40, 93 of them, uh, as opposed to just clicking once. Now, one of the things that, aside from, you know, just the fact of the, the implicit systemic racism kind of bringing that to bear, I'm kind of worried about the fact that anytime something impacts the poor, it's going to be looked at as a systemically racist thing. I mean, there, there's a point at which you have to just ad admit that being poor makes life harder. You know, that's just a fact of life. And it doesn't matter what color you are. Being poor makes life harder. It is harder to live off of less money than it is off of more money. That's just a fact. And all of the ways that having less money as opposed to more money can impact someone is not really a racial thing. And so I worry about how we apply the idea of a disparate impact when it comes to the economic level. Because money's green. Money doesn't look at race. Money doesn't improve life or unimprove, uh, you know, make life worse based on race. It, money's money, and if you have more of it, you're better off. And if you have less of it, you're worse off. And that's that's just the fact, no matter who you are and what you look like. So uh, that's something that disturbs me. The other thing that disturbs me is what I call the ratchet effect. Now, think about this. There are only, I think, six states in the United States that do this straight ticket voting thing. Texas is kind of an outlier. It's one of six states that does this. Now, nobody objected, I guess, when uh, when they implemented this, this straight ticket voting, and I don't know exactly why they did it. I think it was on account of a time-saving measure. Now, for some reason, some people have said, you know, well, we don't want that measure anymore. And now the courts are saying that because taking that measure away would make things harder for minorities, it can't be taken away. I mean, that's basically what the court has decided in, it, in its ruling. That to me is kind of disturbing because this may have been something that was put in not to have a beneficial impact to minorities per se. Uh, this could be something that was put in because maybe people just wanted to make life better for the poor in general. Uh, people who are in the lower middle class, people who are in the lower, the lower economic strata. And saying, you know, well, we're concerned about everybody. This is not a racial thing that we're putting in place. But now it's in place, and now if you take it away, it's going to make it life harder on the poor in general. But because the minorities are disproportionately among the poor, then it's seen as something that can't be taken away because now it's impacting people's ability to vote based on race. It, it's, a, it's kind of a ratchet effect. It's like when they put in straight ticket voting, they ratcheted up the level of comfort that everybody, including minorities, enjoyed. But then when they said, okay, well, we made this law, let's unmake the law, 
Now the government is saying, oh no, you ratcheted it up, but you're not allowed to let it back down. Because if you let it back down, now you're going to make things harder on minorities. And we kind of saw this same thing with regard to the DREAM Act with uh, President Trump. You know, President Obama was the one who put the DREAM Act in and he just, you know, used his phone and a pen and, you know, made up regulations whole cloth and decided people, you know, were going to uh, be treated this way versus that, dependent on arbitrary rules and stuff. And President Obama did that. And, you know, no... I, of course, people complained on the on the conservative side, but there wasn't really much they could do. So then what happened? We elected a new president, President Trump, and President Trump tried to undo with his phone and his pen, the same phone and pen that Obama used to create the DREAM Act, and he tried to undo the DREAM Act, and now the, the Supreme Court's telling him that he can't do that. He, it's Things have been ratcheted up, and now they can't get ratcheted back down. And I, I think this is something that really needs to, this is something that really needs to come to the forefront of the American consciousness when it comes to passing laws and when it comes to making wide sweeping adjustments in society the way that the progressives would like to do. This is really something that undergirds conservative thinking is that, you know, now that we have, because of this ratchet effect, Every time we make a change that might, might make life better for people and it might make life uh, better for minorities specifically, if that turns out to be a hurtful change later on for some, for some reason, and again, I don't know what reason the straight ticket voting thing among uh, 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 Texas and, and maybe some of the other states who might be trying to get rid of it, I don't know what the reasons behind that are. Uh, whether they're just jacking with the political system this close to the wire or whether they're, you know, actually actually have uh, legitimate concerns. Uh, but they're trying to get rid of it, and they can't because this ratchet effect won't allow them to do it. You know, it, it, you, can make, you can do things that unintentionally make things better for minorities because I've never heard that the straight ticket voting system was something that was supposed to benefit minorities specifically, although it might have. I mean, I haven't done, I haven't done the research to go back and look why Texas had done it in the first place. But you could do something that has a benefit to minorities, and then because it has a benefit to minorities, you can't take it away. And that makes it so much more imperative to do a more conservative approach to legislation, to do a measure twice, measure three times, cut once approach to legislation. Because what you put in place you might not be allowed to take back out on account of this ratchet effect. So, you know, this, this is a good example of, you know, not, not just the, the uh, implicit racism versus explicit racism debate, but also just the kind of a, kind of, kind of a, a reason behind the conservative mindset. There is a reason why we don't like, and we as conservatives don't like to change things, if at all possible. And, and, and one of those reasons is, is because you might not be able to change things back. You know, and so you really have to have good reasons for what you're doing and say, you know, yes, we're going to actually do this and maybe, you know, put, put tests on it. Put, put limits on it, you know, like we talk about term limits for Congress people. Maybe we need, you know, term limits on certain areas of legislation. Maybe straight ticket voting is something that should have been allowed to go on for, uh, for four years with reauthorization or not reauthorization and then let future legislatures decide because this really was an optional thing. This really was an optional thing. It was not an essential thing. I mean, there, there's nothing essential about having to have that, that block up at the top that lets you say, I just want Republicans or I just want Democrats. Uh, it's a nice to have. And now, because of the ratchet effect, it looks like it, now it's an essential. And that's just kind of strange, considering we're one of only six states that has it. So we need to exercise caution when we're trying to do these changes, these wide-sweeping changes to society, especially when it comes to things like Medicare for all, free college for all, because guess what? What happens if we decide, you know, this turned out to be a really horrible idea. We're going to have to get rid of this. Good luck. Because not only will the political will not be there to do it, but the courts will be dragged in and they'll say, well, you know, this is going to impact the poor and the poor is mostly minorities still, so not going to be able to do it. And 
I don't know where that kind of, of legal thinking does, that, that poor is going to equal minorities, therefore you have to do, you cannot do anything that makes the life of the poor harder, even if it's poor across the board, because there's going to be that racial component to it. I mean, for one thing, it's a little bit on the insulting side to say that, well, we just assume that racial minorities are always going to be the ones most among the poor. Not necessarily so. I mean, that's going to that's gonna depend on how trends go over the long haul. But um, just the idea that you can't, you know, I, I, I'm a big video game player. Well, I was a big video game player. I've got like three video games that I need to play and, and uh, that I'm pretty much done with video games. But as I was playing video games, one of the things that I always liked was the save points. Uh, anytime you got to a certain point in the game, you had the opportunity to save. I mean, even if all I did was, was change things just a little bit, uh, to my good, I would save. Because I wanted the ability, if I had screwed something up, to go back to a point where I could make adjust where I could make adjustments and correct my path. And with this ratchet effect that I'm seeing in the court system now, I don't know if we've if we've got that same option now. And uh, it's it's a scary thing. So uh, I'm Mike Partika, and thanks for listening. I hope uh, we don't go completely bonkers over the next uh, Supreme Court nomination. I uh, hear it's going to be uh, Amy Comey. Tony Barrett, uh, who is apparently a devout Catholic, and the anti-religion left is just absolutely salivating about all the ways they're going to get to tear her apart. That'll be fun to watch. <laughs> oh my goodness. So uh, I hope you all are uh, having a good time uh, during this pandemic thing. Things are loosening up in Texas, and uh, I'm actually getting to go out with friends and see some movies and do some of the things that uh, I like to do. So at least... At least the ratchet effect hasn't applied entirely to the COVID pandemic stuff entirely, and I would love, love, love for things to get completely back to normal someday. So hopefully that'll happen. Uh, once again, I'm Mike Partika. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk with you later.